On the Move Poems About Migration by Michael Rosen Illustrated by Quentin Blake A Review Cold waves suck up the pebbles on an empty beach And somewhere, somewhere near A child's cry pierces the roar of the boiling water For a moment, just a moment then only the harsh complaint of the swooping gulls can be heard. This happened today. It happened yesterday. It will happen tomorrow. Somewhere in our past, we all have a memory of such a journey. There can be no guarantee that we will escape a similar journey in the future. Bombs are always falling. Why not here? Plagues burn across the planet, and also here. Dictators seize power and citizens denounce their neighbours. Why not here? Those waves of people seeking security, seeking opportunity, yesterday, every day. Where are they now? In a short breath of time they are your neighbour, your friend your doctor, your teacher, the cleaner in your hospital. In time a newer group of displaced people are the ones to be feared and distrusted, yet years after settling into a new home, each bears a memory of a life unlived, a future that could have been theirs, in a sun-soaked Damascus or a snowy Polish village. Friends, family and children unborn that will never be as Michael Rosen describes when he imagines a man endlessly swimming across a lake in a land he had never seen each new settler brings his own culture their own music poetry and foods and enrich a country if that country is secure in its own Identity. What you leave behind won't leave your mind, but home is where you find it. Home is where you find it. This collection of poems from Michael Rosen examines migration with unflinching honesty and powerful anger, but also with warmth and engaging nostalgia. Sir Quentin Blake's illustrations depict friendless families, hand in hand, old and young, moving, always on the move, across bleak expanses of landscape, far from home. The poems are divided into four sections. The first deals with his own memories of childhood in a Polish family in London. The second deals with his memories of growing up during the war. The third with uncles and cousins who escaped the Holocaust and the missing dragged away from their homes to end their lives in the death camps. The fourth looks at global issues of migration. The poems speak the names of the missing and the banished, seek to rebuild the lost villages breathing life into those whose memory they sought to erase. Also, I think, to celebrate the lives of our own parents and grandparents, before those that remember them, remember them no more. And what more evocative reminder than food, those illicit, unhealthy foods, guilty secrets to be kept. And I remember my own grandparents, who escaped the city to live their last days in rural Oxfordshire. Time had washed them up, so many years away from the glory of their youth. His team of shire horses, her pink wedding dress, their larder with its pig's heads, soon to be brawn, tripe, soaking in milk, gelatinous oxtail ready to be sucked crabs and potted pastes, and always bread and butter. Outside a huge pig, which my grandfather was too kind-hearted to kill, 
and this giant land race slept away its days in the middle of the Oxford Road. Soon I will be the only one left to tell their story and recall the day the bombs fell in their street, smashing every window in the house. The whole is a plea for compassion, a call for action, and a reminder of our common humanity. How easy it is to demonise a stranger. In troubled times, how convenient to make political capital from the anguish of those that arrive from abroad to point at them and focus our anger, how difficult to see their plight as ours. Best to remember we were all migrants once, all seeking shelter from the storm, and you can only do something now. Even long after I read these poems, they still echo and return, fresh in the memory. I was particularly moved by the stories of the disappeared. This book will stand as their memorial, and it should serve as a sharp reminder that this almost casual brutality haunts our history and threatens our future. The songs my father sings, when I shut my eyes and go to sleep, I think of all sorts of things. I hear songs and bits of songs, songs that my father sings. How does he know all of these songs? Where has my father been? Who sang the songs that he now sings? And what do the songs all mean? <laughs>